Bruchim Aboim. Thank you for coming. Tonight, what we'd like to, I'd like to deal with is, um, after we dealt with God last week, why be religious? And start off with, I mean, basically God has commanded us to do so. And that's uh, very altruistic and very nice. And it's really something we don't even understand why God would want a world. Uh, the Alter Rebbe says that God had a teva, he had a desire. And on that we don't ask a question. Not only that, the Rambam says, and we'll be talking about that probably many times, that if I could understand God, I would be God. So to understand why God's done, why God does, it's really pretty hard to do. It really, from the a religious point of view, it's really what we call Ratzon Hashem, the will of God. Uh, King has commanded us to do something, a great person that we can come close to, an individual, and we therefore want to do that to be close to him, to serve him the way he asks. Imagine if someone had saved your family and had taken them to his own personal hospital and given them a serum that was priceless and saved them. And then he asked you to do things that you understood or didn't understand. You'd be thrilled to just have some way of thanking him because there's really nothing you could give him if he was the richest man in the world and had everything. So really, in the end, we do the mitzvahs, we do the commandments because God has commanded us to do so. But let's be real. The question we're really going to ask is, what's in it for me? Why should I be religious? After all, um, we all have families where some of our relatives, friends are not religious. And they seem to do just fine. So why should we be religious? What's the, what's the advantage to us? What do we gain? Even though it's a selfish outlook. But the truth is, that's how we're wired. We do things because we feel something, we get something from it. And that becomes the incentive. And then many times we learn how good it is to be good. And, you know, it's interesting when it comes to the enjoyments of this world, the physical pleasures, you can never get enough. Um, the Rambam says that uh, pleasure is like a fire. If you come too close, you get burned. If you're too far away, it's useless. So you have to find that sweet spot. The problem is that you always want to get closer and you wind up getting burned. And no matter what the enjoyment is, it's limited in what it can be. You cannot, if you like eating food, there's only so much food you can eat. And then you just can't eat anymore, you'll get sick. If you like drinking, you'll pass out. If you like sleeping, you can lay in bed. There's only so much you can sleep. No matter what the enjoyment, no matter what the part of life it is, it's, all, it's limited. When it comes to being good, when it comes to following the, the, the rules of the road, what God has told us to do, it's endless. It's a bottomless pit. You can keep pouring, and it just keeps happening. And the more you pour, the better it feels. The more you give, the more you receive. The better you make other people feel, the less you take the spotlight off of you and put it on other people, the better you feel, and the better you are. So, What's in it for us? And it's interesting. Life is really a minefield. And the only way to get through this minefield, God has given us a book. In English, we call it the Bible. In Hebrew, we call it the Torah. If you take the word Bible, it's really an acronym for a book of instruction by which, by which to live on earth. A benevolent father. You know, it's kind of like Superman. If you saw the movie where he goes to the ice palace and all of a sudden his father is giving him all of this advice. Even though we don't see God, we do see God in the book that he's written. God and his Torah, God and this Bible are one. And what he's given us is an instruction manual. And he says, I understand, this is a minefield. Look at the book. Look at the map. And I promise you that not only will you not be injured, but you'll come out of this a better, stronger more confident person. And it's interesting. You know, what we really try to go through life, making it as pleasant and as easy as possible. If you want steel to be strong, the higher the temperature, the stronger the steel. Gold, silver, you have to refine it. 
Otherwise, it's not pure. You have to put it under fire. No pain, no gain. A person who tries to avoid pain in life invariably has more pain. When a person looks at Torah and finds it as an instruction manual, what it gives you is if you water Torah down to one word and everything is left half the way, you just melt it down to one word, it's discipline. What you do is practice religion, practice religion and then bring it into the world. If you have the discipline of religion, so what does that mean? If you're going to keep Shabbos, if you're going to keep the Sabbath, you don't keep it 48 weeks of the year, 50 or even 51. It's absolute. 52 weeks of the year, you keep Shabbos, you keep the Sabbath. And when a person can do absolute, that discipline, and follow that discipline, then you become a force. Then you're the terminator. Then the truth of the matter is you can never lose. Ever. You can have different victories, but you can never lose because you're always moving forward. Nothing stops you. You just keep coming because it's not about you. It's about what God has told you to do and serving God, being connecting with other people. And it's interesting, whenever the spotlight is on you, that's when we freeze like a deer in the, in, in the headlights. But when the spotlight's on someone else, we are, we're good and sometimes great. You know, many times, it's interesting when a, a young man will date, you know, and he's with his friends, he's very glib. He's got a good sense of humor, knows what to say. He's articulate, he's, he's coordinated. Then he finds a woman that he really likes. And all of a sudden his tongue sticks to his mouth. And he can't talk. And there's all the things he should have said after he, she leaves that he thinks that he could have said that would have been really smart. And he looks at his shirt and he realizes he dribbled all over himself. He becomes an oaf because he cares. Spotlight's on him. But when the spotlight's not on him, then he's a class act. And what God allows you to do is take the spotlight off of you and put it on someone else and on him. And when you don't focus on yourself, you become the best that you can be, whatever that is. And that's all you need to be. You just need to be the best that you can be. Each one of us has a purpose, a mission in life. But again, we, we see people around us, they're not religious, they seem to navigate life. And the answer is maybe not. You know, sometimes you have a container and it seems like it's working fine. It doesn't leak, put it under pressure. And all of a sudden it leaks like a sieve. It worked okay as long as you weren't putting pressure on it. Once you put pressure on it, you find out it really doesn't work well. It never did. And that's the problem with the secular life. That these people, though they seem happy, when trouble hits, they're in a world of hurt. They don't have what to turn to. And we, if you're following the Torah, all of a sudden you get stronger because you find a source to connect to. A servant of a king is a king. When we connect to the source, we become strong. We become a force. You know, the winner is like that, but sometimes they'll, they'll pave a highway. Three lanes. And before they, when they finish blacktopping it, they sometimes don't put in the lanes, the lines right away. And it's interesting that when cars drive down a, a pavement, a highway, that's not paved, that's not marked, and there's three lanes, and especially if you go around a curve, on a straightaway you're lucky if you can get two cars, and around a curve only one car. No one's taking that chance. Put the lanes in, and very comfortably, everybody's driving in their own lane. Snowstorm. You know, people are driving each end of the road. They don't know where the, they don't know where the road is. They're either too close or too far. They don't know where to go. What the Torah does, what the Bible does for us, is it marks the road. It takes the guesswork out of, out of life. Life is defined. Where do you go? Look at the lanes. And, and what happens if you go to sleep at the wheel? Which we do. But you know where the road is. You know how to get back. It defines where it is. God has given us this, this, this game plan. He's given us this book to look at. A practical approach. What's GPS? A God positioning satellite. And just like that, sat, that, 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 that uh, GPS in your car, 
The amazing thing is not that it gets you someplace, it's how quick it tells you. When you make a mistake, well, guess what? The Bible does the same thing. When you make a mistake, look into the Torah, you'll find exactly where you need to go. That's what all the stories are about. The stories about even great people who made stupid mistakes, but they learned from them. Good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. Making a mistake is not a problem. You don't learn anything from success. You learn a whole lot from failure. And that's what the Torah tells us and shows us how to do. How to grow as individuals. How to always find success in everything that we do. We are not allowed to be d depressed in any way, shape, or form. The Holy Baal Shem Tov tells us that more than the eight Sahara, the evil inclination wants you to sin because that's his job. He wants you unhappy. Because if you're unhappy, if you're despondent, sinning is inevitable. But if you're happy, it's a whole different life. And it says in Psalm 100, If do us Hashem b'simcha, serve God with joy. It is our responsibility, it's our acharayut, to be happy as individuals, to be ambassadors of God. To make people look at us and wonder, why are you smiling? Why are you happy? Don't you know what's going on in the world? And what we say is, yeah, I know what's going on in the world. I just don't understand exactly how it is. But I know what the end will be. It'll all be good. Why? Because God's the one who's driving here. Sure not me. We're like little children with a car seat in the back seat with the steering wheel thinking we're doing something. God's driving. Relax. But you need to be the best you can be. That's where the discipline comes in. This work ethic. Being religious is not about being lazy. Just the opposite. It's getting up every morning with a gusto, getting up every morning with a desire to do what you can do to be better than you were yesterday. And this is what God not only asks of you, demands of you. And it's interesting. He makes you go to sleep every day. Why? Because no matter what you did yesterday, if you had a lousy day yesterday, get another chance today. What if you had a great day yesterday? Do it again. You can't rest on your laurels. You need to keep being productive. Life is, this is, we call this world the world of Asiya, the world of action. As long as we're alive, what we have to do, what we're going to do is burn out, not rust out. We don't, we don't sit and wait for the angel of death to come get us. Make him catch you. And this is what Torah is all about. What's in it for you? What's in it for you is to live a better life, a sweeter life, have, be a better be a better friend, be a better husband, be a better employer, a better employee. Be a better father to your children. Be, be someone that you look at and that you admire. Someone who doesn't have to make excuses. Someone who can have a, a lousy memory because you don't have to remember anything you said because everything you say is true. You don't have to remember what it is. And if someone says, you know, you didn't say that yesterday, well, guess what? You know why. Because you found something else that's better. Because you studied and you found that life taught you an example. That maybe what you said yesterday, you've learned something. You're growing. And this is what Torah is all about. What's in it for you is for you to relax and enjoy life for what it is. That if you follow the Torah, then you find what life's all about. You know, there's a there was a movie called The Karate Kid where a uh, young boy wanted to learn to defend himself against bullies. And he goes to an old master to learn karate. And the old man tells him he's got 25 cars in, his park in, his, in, back, in the back of his place. And he tells him to wash all the cars, which he does begrudgingly. Then he tells him to wax them, but very specifically, wax on, wax off. Kid does about 15, 20, just gives up. He says, I'm not going to wax all your cars. He says, good, now I'll show you how to do karate. Wax on, wax off. And that's what God does with us. By doing the Torah by accident, we become better people. And that's what he forces us to do. We'll continue with this next time. God bless and have a good Shabbos. Thank you.